everybody, how is it going? Back at last. Man, it has been weeks since I shot an actual video in here, and it feels good to be back. Now, if you want to skip me jabbing and talking, you can go right here and get this will get you right to the plane. But other than that, we're talking about the secret notes of the pentatonic scale. Do me a favor, don't tell anybody this, because it's a secret. So what are we talking about exactly? We are talking about notes that are not part of the pentatonic scale, but sometimes we play them without even actually knowing it when we're inside of the pentatonic scale. And sometimes these notes just really add an extra dimension to this already kind of rock and roll pentatonic vibe uh, that is already going on. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into this one. If you like tabs for this, go ahead and grab those. They're over on my website. You can also check out my lesson packs that are available to download on all kinds of different techniques. And other than that, let's get going. down lick number one. Now this is incorporating a super common note that is added in our pentatonics a lot, but maybe not in the you know initial ways that I'm going to be applying it. So it's adding our flat five, which turns it into the blues scale, which obviously works fantastically with our pentatonics. Now it's usually used in that very bluesy approach, you know? Something maybe like that. Now what I did was I kind of used it to turn it into a three note per string idea. And what I'm also adding is I'm adding our sixth here. To it. So the lick is this, we're going to go... I'm also adding that second, that F sharp right there. So all together we have... And what happens is that this actually works pretty conveniently inside of our pentatonic scale. So let's kind of break down what's happening exactly. So I'm going to go 12 on the A string, which is pentatonic, and then I go to 13, which is their flat 5, then I go to 14 on the A. So... Okay, now I shift down and here's where I'm getting that 6. I'm going to go to 11 on the D, 12 on the D, 14 on the D. Okay, now I simply shift down a string. There's that F sharp again, that second. And I'm going to go um, 11, 12, 14. So again, two of the three notes are all pentatonic, just like before. Now I stay on this string here, I stay on the G, and I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna add my flat five again right here. I'm gonna go 12, 14, 15 on the G. Okay, now we're gonna go to the B string, and I'm gonna add that six again. I'm gonna go 12, 14, 15. It's kinda like a Dorian-ish vibe going on now. And then we're gonna go 12, 14, 15 on the high E string. Look, there's that F sharp again. So I utilized just adding, you know, a couple of different notes to this lick and it made it a three note per string kind of feel that still works in our pentatonic. You know, I'm still, in my eyes, it's still like a pentatonic scale. I'm not really utilizing like Aeolian or anything like that. Um, probably venturing into Dorian more than anything else. But in my eyes, I'm still kind of viewing a pentatonic. <laughs> There's some really easy notes you can add to it, like I said, the flat five, your six, and then that F sharp, you want the second. So next to Rooney on the old chopping block was this one, which was utilizing uh, just kind of ascending through the scale, but we're taking a, a normal pentatonic pattern and we're adding our major third to this one, and which is one of my favorite things to do. Uh, if you're a fan of Warren D. Martini, he did this a lot in his playing, and I always really loved it. And this is actually basically a Warren D. Martini lick. Uh, I'm going like this slow. So basically, it starts right here. It's all kind of like out of that box one. I'm just replacing my minor thirds, which would, and then the key of E would be our G note, with major thirds, G sharps. And it kind of gives it 
it still works with all your other notes. I guess uh, I think it's considered making it dominant. I'm not, don't quote me on that. But I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna go 12 on the uh, D string. And then I go 14, pull off 12, hammer on 14 on the A. Okay, now I roll my ring finger down and I get 14 on the D. Then I go 14, 12, 14 again on the A. So I have this. Now the next part is this. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky because we're adding that major third, so the shape is not as convenient as a normal pentatonic. Uh, it's all the same principle. I'm gonna go 13 on the G, then 14, 12, 14 on the D. Then I roll my middle finger, or yeah, my middle finger down and get 14 on the G. Then I go back to the D string. So I have this. Okay, so. shift down and what I'm doing here is I'm gonna go 12 on the B then I go 14 13 14 on the G then 15 on the B 14 13 14 so okay so we have that much so we have this You could end it, uh, I'm not sure, I, I don't think I went all the way up, but we could go like this if we want to. Anyways, it'd be 12 on the high E string, then 15, 12, 15 on the B. So, then I go to 60 on the high, there's that major third again. So there's your lick, and I really like the way that one sounds. Like you could use it. You know, in like a real heavy situation. Lots of areas you can use that sound in, and I think it has a really unique vibe to it. And it's still kind of pentatonic, just adding that one note in there. Alrighty, here we are, working our way through all these licks. Now the next one is this, which is a, a total Eddie Van Halen idea. And uh, he would do this, and it's three note per string, and I always liked it because when you break it down, like I said, the majority of the notes are all pentatonic, he's just kind of making it very convenient. <laughs> so this is what I did, I went like this one. So let me do that one again, because I butchered that. <laughs> so what exactly is happening? I'm just taking one single pattern. And what I found that Eddie would do a lot when he took a single shape like this, is he didn't pick it the same way or have like the same delivery of each note. That way, it's not so much like same, same. So I'm going 11, 12, 14 on the low E string. Now I pick that. When I go to the A string, I do 11, 12, 14, but I pick the first note and hammer on the last two. So I have. Now I do the same thing, I go down to the D, pick all those notes. Down the G, I hammer on. B, I pick. And high E string, I hammer on. So. That's all that is. Like I said, now, when you really break down what's happening here, it's not too crazy out of the scale. It seems like it is, but it's really not. So, although we're starting on this E flat right here, kind of a funky note to start on, he gets off that note very quickly, and he surrounds it by two notes that are in key. So we go to uh, 12, which is the E note, and then 14, which is an F sharp, like we talked about before. Then you simply move down, and you do 11, 12, 14, which now this is our major third. There's your uh, A note, and then your B. So this is all part of the scale. That's just your fourth and your fifth. Then you go right here. That's just your sixth. Okay, 12, 14, that's all pentatonic. Here, you're getting that F sharp again. 14, 15. Now, this one, you're gonna go 11, which that's your flat five. Then you have your B, and then you're, there's your sixth again. And then here, it's just repeat of the high E string. So like I said, when you really break it down and look at the notes that are involved in it, it's not that far of a stretch from our pentatonic scale. So it's just a really, really cool sounding. Concept that Eddie had. I did find, I have found that um, ascending works better than descending with that lick. What could we have next? Well, we have this one, which is utilizing a whole lot of flat fives all over the place, and it goes like this. We're gonna go.
So what it starts out, like, uh, it's kind of like a little two-string arpeggios is how I'm viewing it in my mind anyways. So it goes 14 on the D and then 12, 15 on the G. So I pick down, up, hammer. I do that throughout the whole entire lick. I do it twice. Then I go down and I'm gonna go 14 on the G and then 12, 15 on the B. So that's back to straight pentatonic. The first one had our flat five in. We're back to normal pentatonic. Okay. Now here we're gonna actually leave with our flat five. We're gonna go to 11 on the G, and then uh, this is kind of like out of box five of our E minor pentatonic. So it goes 11, and then I go uh, 10, 12 on the height. Okay. okay. Now we're gonna shift up here, kind of like a Marty Friedman is what this really makes me think of. Uh, and then up here we're utilizing, again, our flat five. So we're gonna go to, this is just an E note, so we're on our root, so 17 on the B. Then you're gonna go to 15 on the high string, and then 18 on the high. And you resolve it to any E note. But overall, like, the lick is very simple once you get that initial. Sometimes they'll even take, like, this pattern and move it chromatically. All the way. So that is a lick, and that one to me is a really fun one that has a, a, a just a nice, like, kind of aggressive sound to it, but just works in a lot of areas. So I thought we would end with a bendy lick here. Now this one's gonna go like this, real nice and slow. So um, again, you know, very pentatonic, utilizing some of those same notes we've been doing this whole time, but they just work so well. So I'm bending 14 on the G, which is actually bending it up to our flat five. Okay, so you bend 14, and then you go 12, 15 on the B string. Now I'm gonna go to 14 on the B, which is that six. And then I go uh, 12, 15 on the high string. Okay, so I have. And I'm gonna bend 14 on the high string. Let it come back down. So. Then I go to 15 on the B. And I bend that 14 on the B. So I have. Okay. Okay, so we have. Now I go to 14 on the G, and I go to 11 and I bend that, that's that F sharp again, bend it up to that G. Then I go to 14 on the D, and then I go to 11 on the D, there's that 6 again. Bending that up to that D note. Then I can just go to an E. some secret pentatonic note licks. Woo! All right, everybody, hope you guys enjoyed that video, got something out of it. I will see you all on the flip-flop later. And until then, keep on rocking. Get the, you know, get them tabs, check them lesson packs, all that stuff. And high fives are always coming in hot. So cringy, such a cringy outro.